Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Complexity Gaming vs. Wheel Wreck While Whistling, which is a fantastic name. I didn't know they had a name that great for the International 2017 Qualifiers. These are the tiebreaker matches in North America. And uh, we're going to get straight into it. I got somebody here. Well, really, he got me here with him, um, which I'm very thankful for. C-Rock. And uh, yeah, so we're getting into the game bands anything fancy i think that's not that's looking pretty standard here i mean it's funny because these are the same bands we saw last night in the game that these two teams played against each other the shadow shaman and venomancer are not standard bands from wheel this is something they only do against complexity but you almost have to i mean complexity's shadow shaman has actually made enough of a name for itself because it's just one games in weird ways they'll be losing the game and z freak will just go ward drop and win the game it's, <laughs> it's hilarious it's also a very powerful hero, and actually, like one of the things I really like about Shadow Shaman in this patch, is that usually you would expect a support like that to just kind of fall off in the late game, but with his new talents, he really doesn't. He always oh, stays yeah. relevant. Yeah, he actually has a chance to be your hardest carry in the late game if they don't have someone with a ton of attack speed. If you can just get wards down in the enemy base, uh, and you're like level twenty, well, twenty really, where the wards get the plus four ward spawn, it can just destroy a building. If you need one more barracks for mega creeps. It's just insane. But so, the big pick I want to talk about here is this Bane. I love this Bane. This is not a hero that gets picked. I love it, Bane. Please be a mid-Bane. I'm still waiting for the day somebody picks a mid-Bane. It just it doesn't do enough as a mid-hero. You have no wave clear. You have no flash farm. It's but if you get Bane. that Aghanims at level 25, man. Reserve. You could, and then you just get global. And then you're but sad. if you ever get to that point, you do 500 damage every 1.5 seconds and you heal 500 health. It's so crazy. Okay, I understand True. that that is never going to it happen. It is a fun dream. I'm yeah, it just like gets me excited hero. thinking about it, you know? Uh, more realistically speaking, of course, it's going to be a support bane, which is an interesting choice. Um, I mean, going up against Sand King is already a little bit tricky, right? Because you're unlikely to actually get off a full fiend script. And yeah, then silence I mean, especially just, with Silencer. Yeah, Silencer just, just makes forward. it worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I do like the Earthshaker pickup from them, though. Uh, I think the games have been going a little bit slower in the North American qualifiers compared to some of the other regions. And I think Earthshaker just really flexes his muscle in the late game, where just his constant stuns can be a huge thorn in the side for the other team. Once he gets all of his little utility items up, he can just be stunning people every five seconds for, like, two seconds. It's yeah. nuts. I actually find it interesting that both Sanking and Earthshaker are now, you know, constantly being picked up and often on opposing teams because they always, like, have kind of filled this similar role in Dota mm -hmm. where they kind of appear to get it. And now, yet again, we see them, one of them being good, both of them being good, everybody wants them all the time. We've got Queen of Pain and Razor being banned out. The Razor ban actually makes me want, it makes me think that uh, maybe Complex, uh, not Complexity, uh, Wheeler Wreck while whistling... <laughs> Um, maybe thinking about uh, a Bristleback. Bristleback is a hero that doesn't perform that well against Razor, but is otherwise very, very powerful. Um, yeah, they could potentially be looking something like that. I know I Annihilate's been really favoring Puck for his mid lane here too, and while not the hardest matchup in the world for Puck, it's really not a lot of fun. Yeah. And just not wanting that in the game. Complexity likes to play a lot of tempo-based stuff. They like to play the Razors, they like to play the Bristle themselves. Uh, just anything that they can control the pace of the game on. And we'll definitely have to see which route they want to go here. Um, the big question mark to me is, is this offlane shaker or four-roll roaming or shaker? We've seen it play both ways a number of times. And that's that's going to be really telling into what complexity wants to do with the rest of this draft. Well, that's the advantage of picking that hero early, right? You're getting a hero, you're getting a strong hero, and you're giving hardly anything away about your draft. The enemies Absolutely. don't know what to do. They don't know how to go from here. The TA being banned out. So it looks, it's looking to me like um, the Radiant side here is really valuing that mid lane. They want to make sure they get a, a pick there that they want and uh, can make sure to actually win that lane. Lina coming out for complexity. And we'll see what's next. What do you think about... I love Lina. Lina is super strong right now. What do you I think, think about carry silencer? <sighs> like... It's a one, one silencer, things. I don't know what I think about. If you run him in the safe lane, I only like it if he can solo zone the offlaner. Like, if he can yeah. bully the offlaner out and make sure he's getting decent farm, then I don't mind it. But mid silencer, I'm absolutely all for. 
if it's a good matchup for mid silencer, I'm sure, totally down okay. to throw mid. Yeah, I I love silencer in in any lane uh, as a core mid especially does so well with just being able to spam those glaives, and I actually think that's the kind of thing we need to think about in in, in a tiebreaker match like this. Actually, there's. I guess there's two possible scenarios, right? Like either both teams just go for the stuff they know, right? They don't want to risk anything. Or this is where they pull out their crazy strategies, right? This is where they say, okay, let's surprise them. Let's catch them off guard. We only need to win one game. And then stall yeah. forever in the second one. Yeah, in reality, I, I think we could see something a little different coming out from the teams in this because it's the first game, not the second one. They're not fighting for their life necessarily yet. But I'm really sad that Complexity grabbed their Bane already, what's more than likely going to be their hard five. Complexity's hmm. other hero like the Shadow Shaman before, they played a lot of Leshrac. And I love watching Complexity play Leshrac. It's it's just so much fun. Leshrac is one of those heroes that's difficult to really make work without the proper support though. Like, that's the problem, right? Leshrac is a support that needs support to be able to do anything. So sometimes you're looking for more independent heroes and uh, we're going to see the Legion Commander. And it's actually a very independent yeah, hero like that. Um, Legion Commander likely going to be the offlaner here. Right, we're going to have the Sand King support Sansa. Yeah, more than likely. We assume the Sansa is a support here as well, right? We're not going to... Yep. We have seen a little bit of mid Legion Commander in this tournament. I think there's been four games of mid LC so far. Uh, and a couple of them have... One of them for sure has been in Delina. It's not the worst matchup in the world. You just have to make sure you have a little more HP by six. Mm. Uh, or have a raindrop so Lena can't just insta give you when she hits six. But all in all, it results in a break even matchup that you can then get a quicker blink and do something with. But I would imagine this is going to be an offlane LC. Yeah. A lot of the offlaners have been banned out too. There's no Night Stalker, no Clockwork, no Darkseer. It's true. Uh, actually, like, we've got a lot of like offlane and mid being banned. Those are the things that these teams mm -hmm. really seem to value here. Complexity, now thinking about the next pick. Of course, uh, we do have both the offlane and the safe lane still left for them. Right? And there's a lot they can do here. It's going to be a gyrocopter. Oh, no. Radiant's pit. Have, oh, no. I don't think we've seen much gyrocopter, have we? Not a whole lot. No. If anyone saw, I believe it was DC lost to NP with like a six slot of gyro with rapiers. I mean, they had everything they could ever want, and gyro could not carry the game. So I, I'm a little bit nervous with this pick. It's it's shown it's not the late game monster it used to be. It's not the early game monster it was back two years ago at TI. So okay, uh, give me one second. Apparently, people hmm. can't hear me and Dota. Sure. Uh, now I need to figure out how do I make it so they can. I mean, do you have a push to talk set or on voice activation? Uh, I have it on just open mic threshold. Um, actually, just yeah. let me go ahead and. You may just need to turn the open mic threshold seconds. down a bit. Okay, I'm gonna. I've put it to zero now. Do you see the little sound icon coming up on your right when you're talking? Oh yeah, now it is going on all the time. All right, all right, okay. okay. So I just needed to turn that down a bit. I thought I had it really low, but I guess. It is better now. Okay, cool. We got it figured out. Wonderful. And at the same time, Wheel Rack, while whistling, picks up an Invoker. Radiant oh, it's always yeah, scary. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, the the one thing I'm confused about. So I, I'm buddies with a lot of these players on both sides of the scene. And uh, most notably on Wheel, KVH and I Annihilate, their carry and their mid player. Mm. I Annihilate does play some Invoker, but this is a hero that KVH is almost known for Radiant's in the pub scene. He used to play a lot of it. But he's not playing mid for them, he's playing carry. And I don't think I've ever seen him play mid for them. So I'm not sure if they're going to give this up to KVH or if I Annihilate's been practicing his invoker in, uh, in top secret scrims. <laughs> well, we'll see how that works out. Now, I actually kind of want to go back to that Gyrocop, though, right? Um, Gyrocop is not a hero that has had a lot of success recently. Like, he was a very big part of the competitive scene for a very long time, and then they nerfed him so much, so frequently, until we haven't seen him at all. But there is one tool that they have very often buffed about him recently, uh, which is that Agonims. And I've actually seen a bunch of gyrocopters running around with that, you know, applying pressure with it early on. It does make you very tanky, and it does actually give you a decent chunk of damage. Five seconds. I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to, like, somehow find a way to justify this pick, because I, I really... 
I'm worried about this gyrocopter, right? I find yeah, it. Yeah, me too. I find it a weird choice here. Uh, Life Stealer and Nyx also getting banned out. Ventral Spirit coming out for Wheel Wreck. Is that going? To, so does that mean that Sansa is the core? The Venge no, it's the Carrie Venge. Carrie it's Venge. Carrie Venge. Yeah. I'm a little disappointed. Yeah. I love Sansa core, but yeah, it makes some more sense to put wow. Venge there. And an Io. So offlane Earthshaker, I assume. That it is. Yes. This is such an interesting draft from Complexity because if you look at their draft, none of these look like Wisp heroes. Like you can keep yeah. a gyro alive for a long time to make sure he gets his flak procs off with the wisp but it's not really what you'd expect and there's no ursa there's no pa there's no bristle so i'm definitely curious to see what they can do with it z freak is one of the better wisps in the world he's played a lot of it he's he's very well known on it so i'm hoping they can manage to pull something off with this wisp but uh, yeah the gyro maybe they will go the gyro eggs it, it's a tempo item right yes it's it a makes tempo. you a little bit tankier you do a little more damage but it's not a late game monstrous gyro cap. they're not going to win late game anyway there's almost no way they can pull that off the I legion carry venge it's possible uh, it's i don't not, know no invoker is insane late game. legion commander is insane late a silencer always stays relevant as a support and yeah i don't know it's a gonna... lot of this is going to be up to complexity to not give too much away in the early game if, yes. if they give Invoker an early Midas, if they give Legion a, a bunch of little damage or a quick blink dagger, the game could get out of hand. Or Silencer like an early Midas. If he gets to a Midas by, say, 16 minutes on Support Silencer, um, then the game could get very out of hand for Complexity in a hurry. One of the nice things about this Gyrocopter is Gyrocopter is a hero that can definitely gain control of a lane uh, on his own, to some extent. Well, not necessarily, I guess, gain control, but keep control, right? Once you are ahead, on that Legion Commander, you have better boots than her, or she doesn't have any you do. You have a few levels ahead of her. You can really chase her down with that uh, Rocket Barrage. It does a lot of damage, and, and maybe they can use that to really just kind of make sure, okay, the Gyrocopter doesn't need that much help, and instead we are going to spend more time on our other heroes, making sure we secure every lane, and then go for an aggressive early game, go for those aggressive pushes. Everybody yeah, All right. absolutely. All right, let's just uh, get a couple things out of the way, because your chat's been wondering. Yes, he is casting this in Dota TV for those wondering. Yes, he did fix his mic. And no, this is not a Moonduck thing. I heard him on the Crucible yesterday. I am one of the casters for this. And I just asked if he wanted to jump in and do a game. So the Crucible got him here, but this is not a Moonduck affiliated thing. Yes. Let's just get that out there. People uh, are still spamming plus MMR though. But yeah, whatever great. makes him happy. Push plus right, MMR, right, spamming plus MMR. Let's, let's get some happy. predictions. Predictions, predictions. Predictions, yes, yes, of right. course. Um, Magic damage done. <laughs> I'm going with Fiero. I mean, I think it's either Lena or Invoker. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't, didn't quite catch that. I'm taking Fiero here for the first one. Magic damage done. I think the Lena is going to do the most. Oh, those it's predictions. It's Invoker. Oh, those predictions. Oh, now, now, I know I get it. All right. Play with oh, the yeah. highest to magic or pure damage down to yours at the end of the game. Well, it's either Invoco or Lina, right? It's got to be one of those. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to... The thing is, like, if Complexity wins, then I think it's fairly safe to say it's going to be them. I told Nebo yeah, Smoke yeah, Gangs. Yeah, Let's should just put some stuff in. Yep. Uh, oh, I got okay. mine all in. I, I didn't quite Although, get them. Close I, enough. I will say for the last one, it's highest amount of physical damage done in one hit. I'm holding out on the dream that Swindle's going to go crit Earthshaker and just crit <laughs> someone for a thousand. It, it's going to happen, man. <laughs> Gotta stack up those battle theories. Make sure. Oh, no, no, you just go no. Shadow Blade Daedalus. Yeah, you get Shadow Blade Daedalus and free battle, battle theories. theories. No. So you cleave down the entire team. Have you never done this before? I feel like you're just not memeing enough with your meme shaker. Well, you got to get bigger crit numbers, so you need more strength. <laughs> so the Enchant Totem does more damage. You just go three hearts. Okay, well, I yours. can actually get behind that. Anyway, yeah. so in the mid lane, we've got I Annihilate going up against Fero on the Lina up at the top. We've got Mad on the Sand King, KVH, or is it David? Um, gonna go with David. Uh, KVH. No? Not even gonna call him David. All right, KVH on the Ventral Spirit going up against Demon and Swindle Melons. An interesting little situation here. Earthshaker and Bane against Sand King and Ventral Spirit. At the bottom, we have uh, the two, Dota Tattoo on Dota Legion Commander. Two. And Derp Derp, which is an amazing name. I love this name. 
on Silencer going up against Sea Freak and Mu, Gyrocopter and Io. Starting out with those dual lanes, what do you think about that? It's definitely going to be interesting. This should give us a lot of action in the early game. Um, Mu's little Wisp Gyro off lane here should pressure though to the two, but I don't think they're ever really going to be able to kill this lane. Up in top is where the action's going to be though. Like if Demon gets asleep once Swindle Melons is like level three, there's definitely kill potential on KVH here. So I think that's going to be your lane to watch out for. Yeah. Mid, I think, is also really, really important. The impact of these two big cores in the mid lane will be very, very noticeable since we just have dual lanes, right? That generally mm -hmm. makes it so that the game is a little bit more even across the board and the mids have a really, really big impact. Roaming is also going to be a bit more difficult, I think. Exactly. That's what I was going to mention. Roaming is going to be incredibly difficult. The only person I can see roaming effectively in the early game is going to be Demon with the smoke he has right now. Yeah. He hits level 2 if he wants oh, to Oh, we got a bit sleep. of an initiation in the mid lane. Fero going in on I and I like One more hit and he gets it. The first blood going in favor of complexity. Fero God finds a haste rune. Yeah. The very lucky haste rune right there. But the thing is, you get lucky to find it, but then it's skill to use it. And he definitely used it well. And to be honest, if he doesn't get a kill with that haste rune, he wastes time going and getting it. And it puts him behind the mid lane by quite a bit. So nicely done from him there to turn that into an advantage. Yes, and so uh, our Lina is definitely looking strong now. And this is, this is again, what, what, I what we just talked about, right? Like, this mid lane is going to matter a lot. So I think Complexity is actually already looking at a pretty good advantage here. They now just need to make sure this continues and they can snowball it. And that's what they need to do for the entire game. They want to snowball the advantage. Late game is going to be difficult. And I'm really looking forward to seeing if that gyro actually ends up going for that Temple Agonims or, um, you know, what kind of item build. What do you even buy on Gyrocopter? I, I would guess we're going to see like phase drums yeah. into knowing move probably like S and Y. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. He's he's definitely a, a brawly player. Do he you, likes to fight a lot. Do you go home with the Dominator? You used to. When yeah. it gave lifesteal. I don't think you do anymore now that it's not broken and doesn't give lifesteal. Yeah, that's one of those things. I really think that was actually a huge nerf to the hero, right? He doesn't just get that free Helm of the Dominator anymore. He can't stack Ancients as easily. They're going in on oh, that yeah. bottom lane, though. Derp Derp taking quite a bit of damage. And there we can already see that Rocket Barrage in action. It's just so much damage, so much aggression that is possible with that. And, uh, of course, the IO sitting in the back just keeping him going. Yeah, in one singular patch, they nerfed... Well, they changed Helm of Dom and made it really good for everybody else, but worse for Gyro. Yeah. They made it so the jungle didn't stack every minute. It was when it was on two-minute spawns. And with those two changes, Gyro just got nerfed to high hell without ever touching the hero. It just destroyed everything you wanted to do. Well, uh, stacking is possible again, since one of the later patches. But um, Helm of the Dominant is still not necessarily the greatest option. It's, however, also something that's interesting to keep in mind with Io, right? Providing him with the additional health regeneration, the constant healing is going to be more impactful. Um, or more powerful, I suppose. Yeah, so, it, it will. Rotation. I have to imagine we're going to see something like a Glimmer Cape come out of him, though. Yeah. Uh, just making people invis, protect against the epicenter a little bit. Alright, um, Sea Freak just kind of roaming around here. They're already stacking up those... Uh, those uh, creeps over here, that big camp, so they can do some pulls. Although it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't seem really all that clear who is actually going for the pulls here, because we saw. Oh, it's yeah, it's super risky because both yeah. teams have the potential to clear them. Oh, we got an initiation going in on Mu. Mu taking massive damage already. Should go down. Derp, derp. Gonna be the one to pick up that kill, and Sea Freak is forced to just retreat out. Poor Io can't really do too much in a situation like that. Yeah, he doesn't have overcharge yet on the IO, so it made it really hard to heal Mu up. He didn't have a way to drain his own health, uh, which made it so the bottle wasn't going to do as much for Mu. And yeah, just cut your losses. Mu's dead. Mu gets a little dumber losing two in. But that's just life. That's what makes you dumber. <laughs> the longer you live, the more often you die, the dumber you become. Uh, we have that Sanking already rotating, though, and that's actually something that I find really important here. The Ventral Spirit is mostly left alone at the top lane. She's actually doing fine. Right, she's... Yeah, they've, they've kind of turned her into an offlaner, but she got enough to start now that she can just get some jungle farm, still kind of be in lane. Yeah, they, they've done very well to make sure she's going to get something out of this early game. And Demon is in such a weird spot. Yeah, the Bane is trying to, to just get some wards going, but 
putting himself in quite a bit of risk here. I wonder if he's going to go for the wrap now in mid. You can go down behind this tree line and then try to get a sleep off. Yeah, yeah, he's he's going, posturing for if it. If he goes for it, this isn't really going to work out for him. They're going to jump I Annihilate. But the Sand King what? immediately purchases it off. Oh, the double stun! Fierro's build! He doesn't have Laguna Blade. What? Well, that is odd. I, okay, so I've seen Linas do this when they're not going to go Arcanes first. Uh, if they don't go Arcanes or Soul Ring, they skip Laguna Blade just because it costs so much mana. And well, so his goal is just that he, he can spam the Q more often because he's not spending the mana on Laguna. And But it just seems odd. Yeah, like, it's one of those things where it's just like, I get why you're doing it. But I feel like just going for the cookie cutter, cutter standard thing would just be more effective, right? Laguna is yeah. such a powerful tool. Even if you can't use it as often, it's essentially a free kill every time you can. So Yeah, this is definitely strange. Sadly, uh, they wouldn't have been able to capitalize on that anyway, right? So it didn't really have much of an impact on that situation right there. Uh, but still interesting to see. And it's important to keep in mind for future encounters. I wonder if Wheel has picked up on the fact that Fero doesn't have that Laguna Blade yet. And they're gonna go in right here. They find Seafreak. Just gonna run past him. The poor Io is not important enough. Demon dodges the uh, Light Strike away for Mad. Now gonna be stunned up. Sunstrike coming out. Demon drops low. One more attack and he goes down. They turn it around though. Double kill on Firo, now looking for the triple. One more Dragon Slave is going to do it. He yeah. rushes him down with those face boots and he gets it. Got him. Well done. Who oh, even needs man. the Laguna Blade? What are we talking about? This worked out just fine for him. And to be fair, if he's hitting two heroes with all of his skills, it's more damage to go this than Laguna. That's true. He's been uh, hitting some very, very nice Light Strike arrays. Mostly because Wheel has been setting them up for him. For him. <laughs> like, they have really been clumped up quite a bit. But nonetheless, yeah. getting those to connect is really important. And picking up another Haste Rune. Yeah, I have to imagine he's going to pick Laguna up here at, set, or at 9 now. He is running a Soul Ring out. That should give him the extra mana he's looking for. Also working on a Veil of Discord, it seems. Or just two casual no Talismans for the time being and then... Um, It'll stay two casual nulls. Yeah. But right. It's what you go to make sure you win your mid lane. It just gives you more right click damage. It lets you trade with Invoker so right. easily. Absolutely makes a lot of sense. I and I like taking a lot of damage from these creeps. It's going to go ahead and meatball them. Uh, actually, means that he doesn't have that spell available if there's an encounter down here, which it's looking like something might happen. Dota to the two? Oh, Dota to two. That's such a weird name. I keep getting tripped out by that. <laughs> Dota the two. Well, he's Dota the Dead now, because down he goes, yeah, roasted up by Delina. And it didn't even take Swindon Islands as Echo Slam, so that's still going to be up and a threat for them here. And they still haven't seen Fiero's Laguna Blade. Oh, they did actually use it there to secure that kill. So, Laguna being down, but I can't imagine that Wheel is going to look to defend this tier 1 tower. There's just too many people, too many ultimates up down here. Just farm the rest of the map, try to get this Midas up on Invoker. How far along is he? Oh, he bought a ton of starter items, so yeah. it is going to be a little slower than we usually see. But a full magic wand and a raindrop—two things you don't normally see the invoker buy. Very defensive there, just trying to not die. Yeah, you'd rather have your Midas a minute or two later rather than like dying an extra one or two times. So, well, he's gonna get there eventually, right? And once you have the the the, the really nice, impactful thing about a hand of Midas, and it's, oh, actually got an. Initiation up at the top. Gyrocopter gonna be dueled here. He didn't manage to get off the flak cannon. Sunstrike comes out and Gyrocopter goes down. Sea Freak just gonna go ahead and bottle up that bounty rune. Take what he can get before he's also taken apart by the Radiant side. Man, but yeah. That's uh, rough. <laughs> uh, Dueling the Sunstrike gets just so much damage. There, there's really nothing they can do to stop that yet. As soon as Wisp is six, you can start relocating him out of those situations, but we are not there yet. Yeah. It's a really, really powerful combination. I mean, the damage output is crazy. But uh, a big important thing that, or like, not really a big important thing, but it's something I really want to mention about that Hand of Mice. I always think it's worth pointing it out for the not-so-experienced players. The Hand of Mice gives you reliable gold. Reliable gold is gold you cannot lose unless you spend it, right? So if an Invoker goes for something like a Hand of Midas, not only does it guarantee he's going to get a lot of levels just because he can spam it on the neutral creeps, but it also guarantees that he will absolutely 100% of the time get the items he's looking for just because he will always be able to establish that reliable gold base to progress to those items. We got Firo being chased down at the bottom. 
Legion Commander is quite fast. She's got face boots, but so does Delina. But there's the Sand King, the Burrow Strike coming out. And there's not much she can do. Sunstrike gonna f gonna finish her off. That's another dual victory for the Legion Commander. This is exactly what Legion's looking for. He was a long ways off his Blink Dagger. Dota the two struggling a little bit to get to that first core item. But getting two, two dual wins and uh, about a thousand gold now. That blink is going to come online a lot quicker than Complexity was realizing. Yes, uh, he's actually getting... Uh, actually, he's not doing super well yet. 3,400 net worth, third in his team. But he's definitely making progress. And, and the big thing I feel about this Legion Commander right now is he's scaring Complexity, right? He's being aggressive, he's roaming around, and he's having an impact. Even though it seemed from their side like, oh, well, we we're actually doing a fine job shutting him down, and now he's just rushing in on us constantly and actually really getting a lot of damage done. You can see yeah. this gyrocopter, he's trying to farm, but he doesn't really have anywhere where he feels safe. Right, he's in his lane down here, and he doesn't even have vision on anything, and he still doesn't feel comfortable enough to actually go and get last hits. And that's a problem. I'm feeling okay, though, now. Z-Freak is level 6, so relocates yeah. online to save him. That's a... Is Swindle going to get the kill here? Oh, Mad Meng just too tanky. Oh, Fero. Hits uh, his uh, Dragon Slave, but he's going to be chased down. Turn around by the Ventral Spirit. Sunstrike connects, and that's going to be another kill. Those Sunstrikes are so powerful, but Moo coming into the mid lane. He drops that cooldown. Sadly, he doesn't connect on too many heroes, but KVH is trapped into the corner. Swindle Melon's making sure he doesn't go anywhere. And Moo finishes him off with a Rocket Barrage. And the efficiency. Z Freak catching Moo on the relocate yeah. back to keep him farming. What a guy. I appreciate that. This is my All favorite right. thing to do in Dota, hitting creeps. Wisp may have the best so. sound effects in the game. I, I just love the noises. Oh yeah, where's my IO announcer? Like, that's the thing we really need. It's apparently still coming. <laughs> is it? Yeah, there, there's gonna be a Gladys announcer pack. Radiant bottom tower oh. In a pretty sight. I guess that kind of counts now that he is a companion cube, right? Exactly. Companion so, um, cube is love, companion cube is life. Uh, we've got Moo going for that Heaven's Halberd. What do you think about that? I mean, it doesn't seem like it's very much damage. That's what I'm really concerned about. Like, it's a great item in making sure he stays alive in the opening burst here. And I think his thought is, if I can survive the Epicenter, if I can survive Invoker's round of spells, they don't do enough damage after that to ever kill me. And so Gyrocopter does have a lot of spell up. damage. That's another advantage the hero has, right? He can't just spam his Rocket Barrage. His ultimate can hurt quite a bit. So maybe that's just yeah. what he's hoping for. I mean, he, he can. It is some damage, but it's nowhere near what it was. The ultimate's damage especially was the big nerfs yeah. that came out after... Uh, who was it? C-Deck made a big gyro run in TI. They, they just nerfed the damage so hard because what they saw was C-Deck would just get 6 on carry gyro and just run around ulting stuff. He would never farm after that point. <laughs> well, C-Deck had a, actually like one of my favorite runs in all of eSports at that tournament. It that was, was really cool to watch. That was beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, uh, the Heaven's Halberd is an item you've seen a lot of in this qualifier. Oh, Can no. you tell us why? Oh, actually, in a second, we got an initiation up at the top. Let's blink now, too. Cancelled by the sounds immediately. Cooldown coming out. Connects on Dota to two, but nothing else. The dunk! Down goes the Legion Command of Ventral Spirit. Going to be next in line. Sand King now hiding in the invisibility. Trying to just kind of sneak into the jungle. He may be able to do so. And Moko now being chased down. He has to miss out on him, which may actually turn out to be a problem. And yes, it is. Down he goes. The kill is split amongst three. In the meantime, the Sand King still trying to TP out. He's gonna be able to do so. No stun up at the top. So at least one of them escapes. The Sansa, of course, wasn't even in that fight. Nonetheless, that was insane. Good encounter for complexity. Yeah, so Swindlemelons had enough gold for his blink, but didn't buy it from the base. He waited till he could get it to the side shop. And waiting until then was a huge factor in that team fight. Because then he had the blink on him and was able to blink without them ever knowing he bought it. They just thought they had him pinned into the side. They were going to be able to slowly go in there and pick him off. All of a sudden, he blinks out, hits that huge two-man echo into a two-man fissure. Uh, that was so good for complexity. Yeah. Beautiful play right there. All right, right. so Halberd. Halberd, yes. It makes him really hard to duel. Because he has evasion, and he has a lot of health. 
So that that's definitely going to be a big factor there. And as I said, I think he just wants the base HP pool. Because if he can get through the initial round of burst out of wheel, they don't have that much sustained damage. Yeah, one thing I like pointing out about our Halberd is in one in I believe that was the most recent patch actually, they changed Halberd so that it goes through magic immunity and you can't pierce it. Uh, you can't purge it off with magic immunity anymore. Which actually makes Halberd one of the only tools in the entire game that you cannot get rid of. In any way. At all. You oh, yeah. cannot purge Halberd. No matter what you do. Dark Pack doesn't do it. BKB doesn't do it. Nothing does it. And that is really powerful. And it's one of the reasons why we have seen it so much in this patch. Because it's such an incredibly reliable item. If you cast Halberd on somebody, they're not going to be attacking. No matter what you do. Yeah. Now, you do have to get it off before they BKB. You yes. can't use it on a BKB sure. target. But one of the most tilting things is when you're a Sven and you're down to your 5 second BKB and you get halberded right before your BKB. And then you just you waste so much of that time. Almost your entire BKB is just spent sitting there like a monkey. You, you can't actually go on anything. <laughs> Did you see that clip um, of, I believe, Raven? Yesterday, uh, he was in a team fight and he ended up just getting stuck up on a cliff while halberded and BKB active, and it's just like, oh my god, I've never felt, felt so bad for Sven before. Sanking Invisible doesn't have any detection though, which is a little bit unfortunate, so they can't get that kill. Yeah, yeah I did see that clip, it was, it was definitely pretty entertaining. And that's exactly what I think the Halberd is meant to do there though. They had a two-man initiation on Mu, all of the spells went off there except the Epicenter, and Mu was still at half health. Like, it wasn't even close to killing him, so... Gonna be plenty healthy to go back in here and defend their tier 1 tower. And with the Blink Echo online, Actually, we'll have got to a be big very... encounter coming up at the top, and yes, they already run into Matt. The missile connects, Sand King taking a lot of damage, a few more attacks are gonna do it, and down he goes. He connects with a stun before he does, but... before he does go down, but... Uh, it's not quite enough. Now they're gonna try to chase down the Ventral Spirit. She's pretty fast. Throws down the Magic Missile to slow down the Earthshaker. But she gets stunned up anyway. And now Feral's just pounding into it. And down goes the Ventral. Torn apart by Alina. And stacking begins. And she's Fero got her blood the blood right before that. Yep. So two, two extra charges being donated to that. Nice little pickup for Fiero. Also got a Shadow Blade. Basically done. Yeah, it's... it's Already done. That's so insanely fast. Generally, eight, 18 minute Bloodstone is good. Like, getting the Bloodstone by 18, you're, you're feeling pretty good about your spot in the game. And she has that plus a Shadow Blade at 19. Oh, right? she's hasted again. <laughs> this Lena is like hasted for the entire game, it seems. Jeez. I mean, she's already running pretty close to hasted anyway with three fiery soul stacks. This mm -hmm. just makes it worse. And something, uh,. The Lina got went for those early face boots, right? And usually you see the mana boots. But Firo chose to go for the face boots, and as such, he really does a lot more damage. Lina already has high attack speed because of her passive, right? And you can really see the impact here. Every single time she clicks on something, it hurts. It hurts really bad, and she didn't even have her level 15 talent yet. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And talents on Lina have made it so... She goes, like, two caster items, usually, like, Bloodstone and probably Yules, maybe an Orchid. And then just goes right click. It hits awesome. I love what talents have done to Lina. Yeah. I actually find it really cool that the talents they offer on Lina, which is essentially just like pick between one, like pick caster or pick right click, pick caster or pick right click. Not at level 10, but apart from that. Um, yeah. So uh, we have the Earthshaker, but we saw his Blink Dagger already. Now almost has his Forge Staff. I just want to quickly go through the items so we're all up to speed on that. We have the Urn of Shadows on Silencer, but he hasn't had much of a chance to farm up. Poor guy is the lowest net worth in the game at only 2200. Ventral? And a fourth of that came from that kill he got bottom. <laughs> he, he got the last hit on Swindle Melons at one point, or on Moo at one point in time. Did get a few hundred gold out of that, and yeah, it just hasn't gotten anything since. We've got the Ventral Spirit with a uh, Dragon Lance. Face Boots, Ring of Akita. So just going for some stats early on, but she also hasn't had uh, much of an opportunity to farm recently, right? She was doing really well earlier on, but ever since then, she hasn't been able to make much progress. And it's actually one of the problems with Ventral Spirit. This is a hero that doesn't have any flash farming. She just needs to sit in a lane and hit creeps or go into the jungle and slowly kill camps. If she doesn't get to fight, she just kind of gets stale. And we can kind of see that here. Yeah, absolutely. You got to take buildings with carry revenge. 
Yeah. If you're not taking objectives, you you run on a farm really oh, quickly. Smoke. Smoke in the man. They're looking for something. They want to turn this around. Be on. aggressive. Moo is way too tanky to go on. You have to, like, find Z-Freak. Yeah, they can't really seem to find anybody right now. The smoke is probably just going to run out and that's going to be it. It's a bit disappointing. They really got to use these opportunities. The problem is they don't really exist anymore. Like, a smoke right now is only going to get you Bane or maybe Wisp. And anyone else is either going to get saved by Z-Freak or just be too tanky for you to kill and you're going to get turned on. Although finding two alone is going to work. Oh, oh! I didn't even catch that in the mid. Yep, they go ahead and get themselves two more kills. That's really good. I mean, it's not the most impactful kills in the game, but it's still really nice. Oh, that, I mean, that's huge for them, though, because it's going to turn into a tier one tower. Yeah. Uh, and potentially positioning on a second one if they want to keep going right down middle. Difficult. With Dying the Venge's build, though, it is going to limit what they can do here. Radiant Generally, we see carry Venge's max vengeance are either first or second. And uh, with only one point up in that, it is going to slow their push potential a little bit. She just isn't really that powerful yet, which is a real problem, right? They needed this hero to be scary. And currently, she if just you have to isn't. max magic missile first on carry Venge, you're in a bad spot in the game. Like that, that's not where you want to be. Invoker has his Agonims, so that's good news. Also, travel are done. He, of course, has his Hand of Midas, and this is what I mentioned earlier, right? Where it's just like once you have that Hand of Midas, you will always be able to get your stuff sooner or later, but you'll definitely get there. And we can see that here. He's level 16. Yes, he hasn't had a great game, but he's definitely the one keeping his team in the game. We got a fight in the mid lane. They're going to jump in on the Lina, and that is a good duel win. But Urshaker coming on. He wants to turn this around. He gets the Legion Commander and the teleport in from the IO as well. Silencer chased into a corner and shot down. Tornado is just going to keep the dire side away. They don't want to keep fighting. Lina, of yeah, course, yeah. already back alive. <laughs> All right, so you got a dual win on your Legion Commander. You did get a pick off, and it was on a very big target. I mean, that's Fiora's Bloodstone going down. Oh, that actually killed him. Killed him. I don't know if you saw top lane. It was just two Forge Spirits and a Sunstrike. Killed the Wisp. Oh, really? Wow. No, I did not catch that at all. Oh, I feel bad. Oh, I don't even think that's well funny. Well played, support, Danny. Man. Well played. Oh, they're going to interrupt this. This is a good timing, too. They may be able to steal this. They go ahead and jump Moo, but Roshan goes down, Firo picks it up, and that is a disaster. Sanking, murdered. KVH throws out the magic missile, trying to just get away, but Moo has had enough. Nice Moo. Oh, it slows him down. It's actually a big problem for him. The Sunstrike connects, and he dies. Wow. You can see the Ice Wall really showing its strength for idea. Really well positioned by Aya Nyla. And now he's looking for more. He wants Firo. The Tornado Flies doesn't connect, though. Lina is invisible, dusted up. Dota Tattoo runs up the cliff, but no, he just gets taken down immediately. The Fiend script locks him in place. All right, when I cast in a Dota, this is what I want to see. He got a bunch of people running up cliffs without vision and yeah. just kind of doing stupid aggressive stuff. Into the shrine area, great. right? Oh, yeah, the shrine was even running at the moment, too. I mean, this is just awesome. Everything I want in NA Dota. All right, uh, we still haven't made too much progress on the item talk I wanted to do, but we do have a Blink Dagger on the Sand King. We saw that earlier. Legion Commander, well, nothing new there. Just want to quickly cover if there's anything crazy new going on. Lena actually going for Lincolns, which does make sense, yes. right? Her biggest danger right now, the thing she's most afraid of, if, is getting jumped on, either by the Legion, Co uh, Legion Commander or the Sand King, and Lincolns helps against both of those. Yeah, it, it does a couple big things. It stops Burrow Strike, it stops Duel, and it stops Global. So if she's in a good position, it'll actually proc on the global silence and stop her from getting silenced. So even if she is in the back of a team fight, she can still make an impact then when the global comes out. I, I like the pickup a lot here. Oh, they find a Sand King. Do quite a bit of damage with that Laguna Blade, but he's just hiding. The Tornado flies. Oh, I don't know. The Bane may actually die right here. Going on the Lina. Lina goes down. The Aegis, yeah, is, Aegis, of too. Aegis of course, is ready. Demon <laughs> ends up eating up the Sand King, but Lina will die right here. It's not much he can do at this point. We've got backup coming in from Complexity. The IO gets tooled up though, and uh, ooh, we've got a dual winner, and it's the not dead. going to be the IO, but Swindle Malance the finishes dead. the team fight. Four man echo! <laughs> Holy shit! Beautiful play right there. That was actually a fight that was looking great for real. 
That, that's just instantly barracks? Yep. It started out fantastic for the Radiant side. They did really well, they killed the Lina twice. But then Melons just came in and uh, put an end to those streams. He absolutely right, doesn't okay want to deal this. with that. You got the buyback in the tier 3. That is that is fine. They would have lost the barracks if he didn't buy back. So, he, uh, I mean, the Invoker kind of had to there, but that is that is rough on the side of wheel. Your Invoker is now very, very far away from any upcoming items. The Shrines are now open to be taken. And if Complexity can manage to get the Shrine closest to Roshan, it's going to make Rosh a cakewalk for them next time that does spawn. Holy shit. All right, if there's one more Reddit flip thread, Flaming Swindle Melons, I'm going to lose it, because he's been the MVP this game so far. Yeah, he's been doing really, really well. Like, we saw a oh, great man. initiation up early at, the to uh, early at the top, and now this one just completely turning the fight around, right? That was a lost yeah. fight, and he just ended it on his own. Yeah, that's three huge Echo Fishers he's hit now so far in this game. Every one of them turning what would have been a bad fight into an extremely good one. And I'm liking his pickup here. He had a four staff queued up going next, but he decided to go for a Yules. What are they doing? And this is super really cheeky. They're waiting for someone to come push out bot lane. They they don't know that Mad Bang is already down here pushing it, so no one else needs to. So they were just gonna sit there and wait until someone went bot. Right, Yules are done on the shaky. I know and love. Huge item pickup to call out here, though. Uh, Demon managed to get to a whole Lotus Orb already on this five-roll Bane. Oh, that is wow. going to take off Global Silence from somebody. Yeah. I mean, Nina is working on a BKB as well, but it's going to take her a while to get there. But if the Bane can just get rid of the Silence for her, then that's already a pretty good start. And the Shrine goes down. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't even say Fiero is 100% committed to going this BKB at this point. I have to imagine if they're not dying, if he's not feeling any pressure, he's probably going to go damage. I would expect an Orchid. Oh, wow, they actually get a kill down here. Sand King picked off, and that's exactly what you were talking about, right? They set up their trap at the bottom, and they execute it, and down goes the Sand King. And they're probably going to look to push this now. So Wheel's going to be able to get the tier 2 top out of this before Complexity can do anything there. So that's already gone. But they also have to get back and get in position. If you start TPing in one by one into like an Earthshaker Lina, you're just going to die. Yeah. So all of them making the quick hasty retreat back to base. And I can't imagine Complexity's too eager to push into this. It is a scary situation, right? They do have a lot of very powerful team fighting abilities. And actually, Tornado EMP already flying. Gyrocopter now out of mana. I imagine that's probably gonna, yeah, for at least a little bit, be there. the end. And yeah, they're just gonna retreat out. There's no need to take that risk right now. They are in a comfortable spot. They are well ahead. We can just go ahead and grind up a little bit, but a little bit more before we actually go for a game-ending play like that. Gyrocopter just going for the cash or Yasha, and now working on a butterfly. I wonder what that, I mean, the, the Yasha, I guess, Ancient Yasha. I was probably just a casual Yasha, right? Like, he's just saying, you yeah. know what? This is a nice you, item to have. You eventually use it to get Manta and then split the global silence so you can break the yeah. global off of you. But there's no need for him to do that yet. Uh, he's feeling like Butterfly is going to make him almost invincible in this game. So, it's, it's interesting that he went a BKB as early as he did with the Wisp behind him. We've seen Wisp tether to Moo almost this entire game. And if you do have BKB, you can't cast tether on the BKB target. So it makes it a little harder for Z-Freak to, to try to like save him with a relocate. Definitely. Definitely. I think it's really obvious how intimidated Wheel is at this point. right? You can see four heroes are just sitting in their base. The Invoke is the only one that even dares to leave it, but he's just hiding in the jungle. All right, never mind. I figured out Moose's plan here. You can disassemble Halberd. He's going to disassemble it, turn it back into an SNY, use oh, the Talisman of Evasion for Butterfly. That's actually really clever. I, I, it is true that Halberd, um, while it definitely has been nice for him to just have the stats, it actually the hasn't the really been useful, I guess. Like, the active component hasn't been that impactful. Yeah, the Legion's struggling to find a good duel. And that's, that's one of the key reasons to buy the Halberd. And if Legion's not getting duels off and not snowballing, you don't need it anymore. Yeah. So, this is a great way for... Like, usually we see Sanji and Yasha split into Halberd and Manta. Uh, I don't usually ever see it go the other way, so this is extremely creative for Moo. 
it's clever. But it's, like it's it. cool to see. Like, I'm always happy whenever I see pro players deviate from the standard builds. You know, just say, hey, go ahead and I see I mean, Moose is an interesting work. guy, man. I, I'll say, like, my personal experience with him, I hung out with him at TI Raid the year before he became a real pro player, before he was on Archon. And we've been friends ever since, but literally 90% of our communication is in memes and emotes. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll send him just a sad face and he sends me a happy face, and it'll go on for 10 minutes that way. And we'll never actually say a word. I'm not sure if that's funny or sad, but it's definitely one of the two. Both? Probably both. Probably both. We're gonna push up at the, up at the top tower, already at half HP. I don't think that we will see any sort of defense here, especially seeing as wheel is just all at the bottom lane. Five man pushing down a single creep wave and not even getting the last hits. They are very, very scared here. I'm a little surprised to see Complexity still just sit back and relax. I mean, I guess this ancient Yasha and Butterfly is now done, and yes, he did actually do exactly what you said. Yeah, that's that's great. And he got this Butterfly insanely fast. So, what Moo is looking to do here, he's prepping himself for this game in case it goes very, very late. Uh, yeah. If this game goes to the 50-60 minute mark, he needs to have Butterfly, Satanic, and BKB, and then you look to go like Rapier. So he needs to make sure he's he's getting towards those core items. And we do see the Satanic queued up next now. So he's absolutely prepping in case this game goes late. There are more tempo-based gyro builds you can go that do a little bit more right away. But if you think this is going to eventually get to Rapier Gaming, you have to get those three items. <laughs> well, Rapier Gaming is definitely unlikely at this stage. Complexity is in a very good spot. And uh, I'm sure they're hoping to finish it earlier than that. But he's actually already working on a Satanic. Just putting the TPs into his backpack and picking up some casual life steal. And he's also really starting to deal a lot of damage. That's actually one of the things I've personally always liked about Gyrocopter. Where it's like, you don't tend to go for like a super big scary damage item until it's very late into the game. But you just go for all of these like items that give you a little bit here and a little bit there, and then at the end of the day you do still hit pretty damn hard. And you can see that. He's got 300 damage right now, of course he's going to be spreading that with the flak cannon. It's going to be a little bit of a problem. Moka, by oh, the way, sorry, pick I him up at BKB as well. I was actually double checking something here because your stream was correcting me. Um, in Dota 1 and a long portion of Dota 2, Lincolns did indeed block double global because the way it worked... Yeah. Was it, it, was would a a silencer. Spell. it would spawn a silencer dummy unit on top of you that casted a zero damage last word that then silenced you instantly. It was a really weird interaction to make it work in Warcraft 3. And it looks like, yeah, uh, sometime in 2014, that was indeed changed. So yeah, your chat's actually right. Yeah, I didn't want to call you out on it because I, I, wasn't in, I wasn't entirely sure if I was right. I trust your knowledge. Um, it, it used to work for years and years. And the same thing is actually true for Zeus. Zeus doesn't get triggered yeah. by Lincoln's either anymore. Or, like, yeah. doesn't trigger Lincoln's It used anymore. to, though, way back in the day, because it yes. would just spawn a Zeus on top of you that would lightning bolt you. So, yeah, it's it's definitely interesting the way that the mechanics have changed. And that's Dota 2 just streamlining its mechanics, which needed to happen. There were way too many of those weird interactions. Well, you know, like, that one is actually one of those where I can see keeping it in the game. There are a lot of other smaller weird ones where I'm more inclined to say, hey, maybe that should be changed. We're gonna see another Roshan here, and this is, one, this is of course the one that is going to drop a cheese. The nice thing is both the Lina and the Gyrocopter got a spot still available, and this is of course going to be uh, really nice for them, right? I feel like, let's go ahead and get that Roshan, get the cheese and the edges online and start the push. Yeah, and I'm totally for putting this on Fiero. He's way squishier than Mu in the grand scheme of things. And uh, by getting it onto Fiero, you protect the Bloodstone a little bit. He's already down to eight charges, so a little bit rough for him here. It's Although I'm, gonna say, I'm impressed the wheel's holding. Oh, you absolutely hold this. It's so good. I mean, it reduces your Lincoln Sphere, it reduces your BKB. Yeah. It works on items too, and it's just nuts. But I I'm impressed wheel's holding, though. They, they haven't lost the barracks yet. That tier 3 fell a long time ago. Admittedly, uh, Complexity hasn't really gone for anything. They have just taken that tier 3 tower and then afterwards they decided, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and farm up. There hasn't been a real attempt at a push. And I understand that yeah. that is because uh, Wheel hasn't really given them an opportunity. 
But while doing so, they've also not continued to really make up this deficit. Like, they, they have just been falling further and further behind. In that period of time, the gap went from 10k to 15k. Yeah, this is generally... Oh, oh we got a fiend script on the Mocha. I and I like going to be caught out, but pushed out and the global silence used. And this was actually, I think, the point here. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're perfectly fine trading grip for global there. That yeah, they didn't even need to use the global either. That press the attack did come out fairly quickly. EMP flies. Gonna burn uh, <gasps> Moo's mana. Beautiful Damn. dodge by Your the Bane. God. Lena has the Lotus Orb on her, and she's now pounding into the ventral BKB dodge on that Laguna Blade. Though it's not an Aghanim's Laguna Blade. Or shake up in here. Barracks is still dying though. Complexity doesn't get a kill, but they don't need it if they just take down the barracks. Lina taking a lot of damage and another beautiful sleep from the Bane. He's now trying to maybe turn us around. The missile is flying. It will not want to even connect. The Yules keeps Sand King safe. But that's still it. Complexity comes in, takes a barracks and goes home. Oh, man. All right. The totally not relevant part of that fight. But what I found the coolest thing, Nightmare basically rips you off of the map for like 0.3 seconds. So you're, you're not able to be interacted on by anything. And so he... Made it so Fiero dodged the EMP. Yeah. He, he slept Fiero for just that instant that the EMP was going to blow and then instantly woke him up. That was <laughs> so cool to see. That was definitely oh, a nice little, uh, nice little encounter there. Now, a funny thing that happened was the BKB um, coming. The, the Laguna Blade is a little bit delayed, right? You cast it, and then the damage comes out a little bit after you have cast the spell. And mm -hmm. KBH actually managed to activate the BKB, which was, of course, almost certainly incidental. But he activated the BKB after the Laguna Blade was cast. Got hit by the Laguna Blade, but didn't get hit by the damage because it is still magic damage and gets blocked by the BKB. Yeah, online I would say it's it's not super uh, intended, I guess. There is too much latency to do it. Yeah. On land, though, that's absolutely something that happens. Like, uh, Finger of Death's even easier to dodge. Ooh, oh, they're gonna in swap though. in the gyrocopter. He's taking a lot of damage. Activates the BKB. Duel comes out. And he gets the dual damage bonus. Lena just working on I and I. Like he's gonna be forced to retreat. And Mu cooldown just to fuck up the silence. Oh god, that poor guy didn't stand a chance. We got Mad coming in. Nice epicenter. Does a lot of damage. Meatball completely with us though. EMP burning a bit of mana yet again. Sanking will go down to the Lena after all. Annihilate. Still standing in the background, trying to fight, but he just doesn't have the spells available. He just does not have all the tools that he needs for it. And now, Mu is standing strong. He has his satanic. He's just waiting. He's just looking for an opportunity. A few hits, and he's back up to almost full HP. The barracks go down. Imoka goes down. He almost died just so he could buy back and come back into the fight. EMP flies yet again. Nice dodge. The Bane. Beautiful. That interaction yet again. Just kind of making sure the Lina... Doesn't take too much damage, doesn't lose her mana. Swindle Melon's oh, coming in, going for the big dunk, doesn't connect with it though. Swapped in, KBH looking for it. Up into the air goes the Swindles, and the silence comes out. Make sure that not too much happens from Complexity. Complexity is actually now having the Lena drop really low, but of course she does have the edges, so she doesn't really care too much. That's two more kills for Complexity. Invoke and Silence are the only ones left alive, but what can I Annihilate do? Well, he's gonna try his best. He jumps in, immediately gets slapped, and goes down. And that's gonna uh, yeah. be the game. I mean, what a dismantling there. As soon as Swindle picked up the blink on Earthshaker, that game went 100% their way. They, they really just didn't drop anything there. I mean, there was a one pickoff in middle for two of them, but other than that, it was a clean game on the back half of that for complexity and a very strong showing going into the next game here. Oh, our predictions were wrong. So. I got one right. I actually did get one right too. I got the first blood one right. Yeah, oh, that's too. a start. Do you actually get something for this? I never watch Dota in Dota TV. I always watch it in on Twitch. So. Yeah. Um. I I don't do the predictions very often. So. All right. Cool. Well, Bami, it is up to you. We could finish out these qualifiers. If Absolutely. You would like. I am all up for it. The only problem I all may right. have is that I could potentially die while doing so. I don't know if you no. noticed, but my throat sometimes acts up a little bit in those fights. But I'm going to try fine. my best. All right. Same password lobbies up. All right. Let's Let me go. Know once you're in.